fact that she promises a lot, promises to be able to run injury free, but what actually makes a shoe minimalist or barefoot, I'm really keen to answer in this video. So that's something that you want to discover and understand, keep watching. A minimalist shoe versus a barefoot shoe, aren't they both the same? A barefoot shoe can be a minimalist shoe, but a minimalist shoe is not always a barefoot shoe. Hi, welcome to my video. And um, today I'm gonna to be discussing how I got into wearing barefoot running shoes. And um, this started seven years ago when I read Christopher McDougall's best-selling book, Born to Run. And this is where he started off to try to answer the question, why does my foot hurt when I run? This sent him on this epic journey to discover this tribe of running people, the Raramari also known as the Tarahumara, who live in Mexico's remote and rugged Copper Canyons. So his doctor told him that he needed to stop running, otherwise he was going to permanently injure himself. Christopher McDougall wasn't willing to accept that prognosis, and ultimately, through the book, he discovered that as humans, we are born to run, just not in modern-day ultra-cushioned running shoes. Now, in 2021, Nike do not make minimalist running shoe anymore, and most other brands have moved away from minimalist shoes. Companies like Nike and Hoka have moved in the direction of maximalist shoes, where the cushion soles are becoming massive, and you might even describe them as running on clouds. So who's right? Are maximalist, like minimalist or barefoot shoes, just another fad? And the question which I wish I knew the answer to and a better understanding of when I started looking into barefoot and minimalist shoes, what actually makes a shoe minimalist or barefoot? If you are finding these videos useful, please feel free to like and comment if you've got any questions or thoughts. Are you into barefoot running shoes or maximalist shoes? And which do you think is better? So I'm not an expert, but these are my own thoughts and experiences from wearing Vivo Barefoots over the past 12 months and also my foray into barefoot and minimalist running over the past seven plus years since I read Born to Run. My first barefoot running shoe were these from New Balance. In fact, if you look at them, you can see they're not a barefoot shoe, but I'll go into more detail shortly about what constitutes a minimalist shoe versus a barefoot shoe and when I first was looking the challenge I had was what makes it minimalist or what makes it barefoot and this is the first problem I didn't know there's no clear standards for what constitutes a minimalist shoe and for me I wish I'd had some clear descriptions about what is the difference between barefoot and minimalist and even for example a maximalist shoe. Modern shoes are dictating the shape of our feet as opposed to the shape of our feet which if we perfect feet when we were born and if you look at the foot in the image here you can see that a baby's foot is perfectly shaped but modern day shoes whether it be running shoes or casual or dress shoes are dictating the shape of our foot and ultimately causing our feet to become more squashed in with the toe getting bent around as opposed to the feet and the toe being more spread out. So shoes should be dictated by function not fashion. The Tarahumara they do wear shoes but they're more like foot coverings purely designed for protection when they're running such long distances the copper canyons floor is particularly uneven and rugged you wear like a piece of rubber which they fashion to fit the shape of their foot and then pieces of leather they then attach the piece of rubber to their foot and then they lash it around their ankle it's known as a harachi hopefully i've pronounced that correctly which is basically a sandal which is common in mexico allowing them to be able to run in the most natural way possible be protected and run naturally so how does a barefoot shoe differ from the minimalist shoe or a regular cushion running shoe if we're looking for example at the new balance what they call the minimalist shoe i bought on the surface it did look like a barefoot shoe zero drop is the first one between the heel and the toe flexibility is the next so the shoe should be able to just scrunch up like this. They have no arch support. So again, with the foot being flat under the arch here, there shouldn't be anything which is raising the arch up and having support. So a lot of modern shoes will have arch support and stabilization so the foot does not move. The challenge with that is that then your foot can't move. And if a muscle is stopped moving, just say you put your arm in a cast for six weeks, if you break your arm, the muscles atrophy. Having the ability for the shoe to be fully flexible allows the foot to flex 
and no arch support allows the foot to get stronger because it's allowed complete freedom of movement. And cushioning is the next thing. Yes, we're at the new to cushion shoes, so if you went straight into a shoe which has no cushioning and a thin rubber sole, it's not going to be very comfortable. So basically you want the minimum cushioning you can get away with to allow you to be able to wear the minimalist or especially barefoot shoe, but not so much that you're losing that feel and sensation between your foot and the ground. And the next thing, similar to cushioning, is a very thin sole. So yeah, we do need the sole, but ultimately the sole is there for protection. As someone said, you want just enough to keep your foot from getting cut and from getting cold. Beyond that, you want to have the most feel and flexibility in that shoe as possible so that you're able to get the most feedback. There's I think, 200,000 nerve endings in your foot. And if you're wearing massive cushioned soles, you're not going to be able to feel the ground. And then as a result, you're going to end up putting your foot down harder, especially with your heels dragging just to get that feedback. If you're wearing a minimal issue, you're going to feel the ground. Even if there's a level of cushioning, you're going to need to feel the ground and you'll actually want that because it actually gives you enough feedback so you actually land more lightly, more gently, and you will actually naturally adjust from like a heel strike to more like a midfoot or even flat strike. I'll get into the details of running style in another video. I don't want to overcomplicate that. Thin sole, again, the challenge here as well, one shoe manufacturer, even making a barefoot shoe, the number, the thickness of the sole does vary. So between three and four millimeters seems to be the, the standard on most shoes that I've seen. And the one thing in this shoe, which unfortunately made it a minimalist shoe and not a barefoot shoe, is the shape of the toe box. So if you look at this toe box, it is particularly narrow. And if I showed you, I think I've got some video in of me standing on top of this so you can see my feet and you will see very clearly that my toes splay out over the side when in a natural position. So this narrow toe box is going to squash my toes. That is the one thing which doesn't make this a barefoot shoe because barefoot shoes have fan-shaped toes. If I can show you my Levos, you can see that they have a more a wide toe box. So it allows the foot to naturally splay out so in this shoe is, you can scrunch it up, it's got a thin sole, wide toe box, very little cushioning. Cushioning in here is going to be two millimeters of cushioning in this. And you can actually choose not to put the insole in and just run just with whatever materials in there between you and the sole. Hopefully that's helped. We've got zero drop to the heel, wide fan shaped toe box, no arch support no very little cushioning and a thin sole and the key objective of the shoe is for protection from cuts and the cold and the idea is to get away with as little protection and material between you and the ground as possible comfortable enough to allow you to wear it for reasonable periods of time but not limiting or reducing the amount of feel that you get which is very important so you're going to feel the ground in a barefoot or even a minimal issue even to the point that my feet do tingle a bit just from rather that sensation which you don't feel in a, a wedge of foam between you and the ground which is stopping you being actually able to feel the ground and actually makes you less stable if you try to balance on a foam mat or even a mattress on one leg you're going to feel less stable than standing with your bare feet on the ground. So originally I mentioned that Christopher McDougall was seeking the answer to the question why does my foot hurt when I run and eventually he actually was able to change his running style when he started wearing barefoot shoes which allowed him to run even some ultra distances with the Tahu Mara, if you read or have read Born to Run. Of course, he had to change his running gait, the way he ran, and how his feet interacted with the ground. And this is the challenge that I definitely find personally, and I think a lot of people who've read Born to Run struggled with that. Yes, the book promised that they should be able to run pain free. Yes, barefoot shoes if you are able to successfully change your running style from regular, say, heel striking to midfoot, forefoot, or even like a tripod landing, as some suggest is the best solution for running, but that's definitely beyond the scope of this video. The Born to Run book talks about a midfoot strike, so landing on that midfoot and then the heel touches down. And I know personally when I strapped on these shoes when I first started running, I watched a few YouTube videos on how to run barefoot, 
laced these up and then headed out. And I actually ended up with really sore calves. Because you can think, oh, I'm running with a midfoot strike, but in fact, you're overcompensating. So what I thought was a midfoot strike was me being right up on my toes, calves engaged the whole time, heel never actually touching down or very little, and wondered why I was probably running too far as well. So transition from one to the other, especially if you have a lifetime of running in regular running shoes, cushion shoes with a heel strike, you it's going to take you a long time. I've been wearing these. I actually gave up wearing them and continued wearing regular running shoes, but still trying to run with a barefoot style. I did struggle with that. So obviously when you wear a cushion shoe, it's actually more difficult to get that feel. And I bought the Devos 12 months ago, decided again to really focus on wearing a barefoot shoe the whole time, just to get me that feel and allow me to feel the ground better and adjust my stride but it definitely does take a long time so if you're hoping for a quick fix with a barefoot shoe that's not going to be the case it is something that you're going to need to stick with and i think is this is the problem why people saw barefoot or minimalist running as a fad because it didn't give them the quick fix that they were hoping for we are after quick fixes and the barefoot shoe promises a lot promises to be able to run injury free but the reality is not as straightforward and as quick as you might hope. You need to be willing to take the time, slow down and accept that your current pace for half marathon or 5k or whatever is not going to be the same in a barefoot shoe. And if you try to maintain it, you're going to discover you get injured. You need to accept that you need to slow down, build the distances back up and even video yourself to understand what are you, am I actually doing? Am I up on my toe too much? Am I in the midfoot strike? I mean, the differences are very subtle here. The idea, I believe, is to land on your midfoot or even with a tripod landing like Shane Benzi talks about, if you're familiar with him. I can discuss that in another video. But yeah, it's going to take time ultimately. That's what I'm trying to get here without me rambling too much. So just be aware that barefoot and minimalist, minimalist terms can be used interchangeably and as I discovered a minimalist shoe not all minimalist shoes are barefoot shoes although all barefoot shoes can be classed as minimalist shoes confusing right yeah so just be careful just choosing a shoe is one thing and running in it is a whole different beast something for another video so I hope you find this video useful if you did please like and Leave a comment, let me know about your experiences with barefoot or minimalist shoes. Have you already got a pair? Are you thinking of getting a pair? And suggestions on things you'd like me to discuss in future videos. I always like to know about things that you want to learn about, hear about, and I'm happy to discuss. I have been on this journey for the last seven plus years, going from these New Balance minimalist shoes to my current Vivo barefoot. I am not an expert, but I've had a good amount of experience over seven plus years trying to run. I'll stick up a photograph of me in a recent marathon, or half marathon, should I say, where I was towards the end, wearing a regular running shoe, but trying what I believe to run with a barefoot style. And you can see in this photograph, I'm clearly heel striking. So yeah, even when you've been trying to do this for years and you think you've got it down, when you get tired, you can often revert back to um, old habits, especially when you've been running a particular way for 10, 20, 30 plus years. Yeah, so it's a long journey, but definitely one that's worth persisting with. As always, thanks for watching, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in the next one.